genie, married is married. Whether it's in your Mormon temple or a church or a house, it's, it's all the same. Uh, Daddy, you don't understand. It... I, I know what the guide said. Only Mormons can go in your Mormon temples. If you get married there someday, your mother and I won't be able to be there. Now, don't you think that'll be awfully disappointing to us? Yes, I... Well? Daddy, here, let's sit down. Let me just tell you what it's like to get married in the temple. Well, okay, I'm listening. Okay. You go in the doors, and there's a foyer with a desk. You show your temple recommend there. That's a little card that certifies you're a member of the church in good standing, and that you've been interviewed. Oh, that? Just enter a church? The temple isn't the same as a church, Daddy. We don't hold church services there. It's just for special sacred ceremonies. There's an inscription on the temple that says, the house of the Lord. That's really what a temple is. Oh. Go on. Anyway, you show your recommend, and then you go into the dressing room and change into all white clothes. And then you sit down in one of the ordinance rooms. Oh, so that's where you get married. No, before you get married, you see a presentation where you learn more about who you are and your relationship to God. Oh, it's beautiful, Dad. You learn about the creation of the world and about the first man and woman on Earth and the instructions the Lord gave them. During the presentation, you make covenants, commitments with Heavenly Father. Well, you promise, for instance, to keep yourself morally clean and to dedicate your talents to His purposes. And then you go to the most beautiful room of all, the celestial room. Oh, it is so peaceful. Y you can just sit and kind of meditate there about the things you've learned. Is that where you get married? No. You go into a smaller room, just off the celestial room. That's where whoever I marry and I will kneel down at the altar. The man who performs our marriage ceremony will give us some counsel and advice. And then, with the authority he holds from God, he'll marry us. Not just till death do us part, either, but forever. Oh, that's why you want to get married in the temple. You think you'll be married forever, even after you die. That's right, Dad. Well, these days, people even write their own wedding ceremonies. I mean, you can have anybody say that when he marries you. Well, it wouldn't mean anything, Dad. A man has to have received priesthood authority from God in order for the marriage ceremony to be valid after death. Well, just like the apostles had to receive priesthood authority from Jesus before he could say to them that whatever they bound on earth would be bound in heaven. And besides that, an eternal marriage can't be performed except in the temple. Now, Jeannie, look. Your Mormon religion has only been around since 1800-something. What about all the people who got married before that? Do you think God's going to say, sorry, you didn't get married in the temple, so you're just... <laughs> Daddy, wait. There's a part I haven't told you yet. Getting married is just one of the sacred ceremonies that takes place in a temple. Well, let's say you've been through the temple the first time. After that, each time you go back, from then on, you're given the name of a person who has died, and you go through in his behalf. You can be baptized for that person in the baptismal font in the temple. Then you make the same covenants for him as you made for yourself the first time. And finally, you and somebody else can be married in behalf of him and his wife. Well, not just married, because they were already married before. But now, in the temple, they're sealed to each other forever. <laughs> but what if they don't want to be sealed to each other forever? Well, they don't have to be. They can choose whether or not to accept the ordinances that you've done on their behalf. I've never heard of such a thing, Jeannie. This is so important. Why haven't I ever heard about it before? About being baptized and all for someone who's died. That's what I wondered at first, Dad. But it's in the Bible. The Apostle Paul talks about baptism for the dead. He does? Mm-hmm. I'll show you where. Uh, just a minute. That's okay. Uh, there's probably a lot of things in the Bible that I haven't read. It's just that it's pretty hard to understand. And another thing. If you're given the name of a different person who has died every time you go to the temple, who finds all the names? I mean, 
how can you... Daddy, have you ever heard of the Mormon genealogical libraries? Is that another place just for Mormons? <laughs> no, it's for anybody who wants to find some information on his ancestors. There's a main library in Salt Lake City, Utah. And then there are branch libraries in different places. They've got volumes and volumes of family histories and huge filing cabinets of microfilms with birth records and death records and things of people from countries all over the world. Some people have traced their ancestors back hundreds of years. Anyway, every Mormon family is responsible for researching at least four generations of his family tree. And then the family submits the names of their ancestors for temple ordinances. Well, you go to the temple all you want for our ancestors, Jeannie. But when you get married there, I want to be there too, okay? Okay. Okay? You mean you can fix that up? Daddy, it's not up to me. It's up to you. You can go to the temple if, if you really want to. <laughs> if I fulfill all your requirements for a recommend, you mean? Daddy, Mormons didn't invent temples or the requirements for entering. The Lord did. In the Bible, it tells about Solomon's temple and Herod's temple when Jesus lived. The Lord has always commanded people to build temples, even in our day. And he's always made certain requirements of those who enter. Oh, but Dad, it's worth the effort. People all over the world today, after they've been through a temple, say that it's really changed their lives. I'm so glad that I, that I decided to get married in the temple and know that it was not only for my mortal life, but for eternity also. It just gives you something to work for together. It's sort of like a matter of perspective if you see this life as just one little slice out of eternities, then you know what, where the most important part of living is and where that you should put most of your efforts. And there are so many divorces now that it's really scary, and that's one reason I think that in, you ought to have a temple marriage, just to have, strive more for an eternal family and not for divorce. And, and I think that's really important. Well, if you don't have an eternal bond in a family, family life loses its purpose. There's more respect, there's more love. Uh, we have a common goal now that uh, we're working towards. The moments that we have together seem more special. We'd be with them, if we're all worthy enough, forever. That's the only goal that matters. You and Mom could be married in the temple too someday, Dad. So you could be with each other forever. Jeannie, I'm going to have to read some more about this and study it out. It confuses me because your mother and I have always believed we would be together after we die. That things would just work out that way. Daddy, that doesn't sound like you at all. You've always taught me to plan for things, like having money to come out here to college, or like you planning for retirement. You've always told me not to leave big things to chance. Well, being together with your family after you die is what I call a big thing. Daddy, if you want to read something, there's a you book... You really that... believe that, don't you, Jeannie? That there's no way a man and wife can be together in the next life unless they are married in the temple. Yes, I do. Well, I don't know if that's true or not. But you know what bothers me now? What's that? What if it is true? Mm -hmm.